it's kind of funny watching this speed test because this was pretty much at the height of my burnout. I will make a video on that. I'm gonna have to explain to you guys at some point why I was missing in action for a bit. And um, you can actually tell that I go um, and fall quiet a lot. Uh, I drop things very regularly in this video. I cut it all out because it was a bit shameful, but Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, so it's interesting to watch myself uh, about a year ago. This was recorded in March of 2023. It's now March of 2024. But this is kind of a nice pile of audio. This is the first part of this series of this pile with some pretty good machinery. And I'm actually, even today, very positive about. Um, enjoy this video and uh, see if you spot the changes. See you at the end of the video. I'm sitting here and you know what that means. There's a pile of audio there and video actually. A Panasonic SVHS that I bought for two euros at a thrift shop. And other than that, there's some stuff that the record store got in and some stuff that I gathered through the months. Uh, let's, see, uh, let's see what we got. First up is this Philips. I think it's the 22GA308. This once had a spring. It doesn't anymore, but it works. Uh, it's got a little foot here for the dust cover. It comes with some accessories, an extra shell I got. Um, that's the, the screws to lock the chassis. Not bad. What else is in there? Uh, some weights for the head shell and the original cover for the stylus. I'm definitely going to put that back on. That looks brand new. Usually these have deteriorated dots. So look at, let's look at this one. No, that's fine. Looks a bit thin. AR8535. So that's an Aristona model, not a Philips. Same, exactly the same. These are great because they have the arm of the uh, 212 by Philips, the one with the capacitive switches that always break, but none of the difficult electronics. So chances are that this one's going to work just fine. These did come with a built-in preamp, so this could have a built-in preamp. We are not sure yet. Uh, about to find out. Let's plug it in and see what we get. Oh, yeah, that's not the correct plug. I was afraid that might happen. It says the weird Phillips plug. Uh, and I don't think I have one. So, can you see? So we'll have to uh, modify this one a bit. Uh, that sucks. Let's see what we can do. Good news, found the cable. It's this one. I'm not getting rid of this. I will have to adapt the machine. Uh, but in the meantime, we can test it out. There you go. 33, oh, and it stops. 45, 33, lift goes down, lift goes up. I betcha this thing is gonna play just fine. Let me plug it in. I need an adapter because this is obviously dim. Uh, pretty good plug, if you ask me. There's nothing wrong with dim. Concocted this box of test records. <laughs> this is not what's in it. There's some random test records in it. Because I was going through them so fast, ruining them every time, uh, because they were just in my uh, cabinet here. I was like, I need to find a way to keep them um, in good shape a bit longer. They don't have to be perfect, but they need to be playable a bit longer. So, let's see. This is actually a Slade record. It's, it's kind of nice. I should have probably not used it as a test record, but it's always possible to find another one. Whoa, there's no stylus there, I believe. No, it is not. Now, I'm not sure if I have a stylus for this. Oh, I do. I actually have an entire cartridge here. Let's just plug this in for now. See what we get. Well, it appears to be very quiet so far. Am I doing something wrong? Yes, I am. I'm plugging it into the line input. So it probably has no phono preamp then. There we go. One channel, two channels. Yay! That's a good start. just lost the channel but that's probably let me see there you go okay so that works fine I have a bit of uh, interference but that's all the adapters and shit I'm using here that never works now let me see if I have a an adapter with the ground I think here's one I solved the problem here we go no buzz too many adapters and little things in between. If I plug it directly into the into the mixing console with my one adapter, it works perfectly fine. Well, that's a surprise. Got my soldering iron ready, and then I find that it's actually screwed in the cable. That makes this a very easy job. There's literally just screws holding this together, and I can just screw in a new power cable. There you go. This is the old 
pluggy thing, I will actually have to desolder this um, and then put this back. So that's, uh, I'm probably gonna put it back. Mm. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do this because this obviously isn't, fun obviously isn't functional anymore. And then I have a power cable here that I can just put in there, screw it back and uh, Bob's your uncle, that's awesome. Two hands is not always enough. Sometimes I see, yes, I hurt myself there. Sometimes I see monkeys with their super practical feet. And I'm like, we could use that shit. Yay, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna immediately create a ground uh, because I may as well. I'm probably gonna put this in backwards so it doesn't stick out. Now, I don't know who designed this case, but as soon as you take the screws to the bottom out, this, this, and the bottom are three separate parts. How do you get that back together? Yeah, you'd have to screw from the bottom, but it has to be on its feet in order for it to work. I've just been fighting this damn thing for about half an hour, just getting three damn screws in. Phillips, what the actual fuck? Yeah, see, that's the problem. What the actual fuck were you thinking? Really, really done with this one. Um, so I, uh, I hope this screw is catching now because the other two now are in. Yes. Don't ask me why it's working now. But we should now have uh, a ground and um, a power cable that works. Phillips had a lot of ideas with these record players, but they're not all good ideas. Okay, let's see. We have one whole channel. There we are. That adapter, that needs some love. After having spent way too much time on that record player, let's do something simple. A pair of computer speakers. Let's see if they work. Let's see. Volume. Woo! Ugly squeak. That doesn't feel happy at all, that uh, volume pop, to be honest. There we go. getting better. These are the Logitech something or another. Uh, S0264B. Very catchy. As far as I can tell they're a full range unit with a passive resonator and they just don't have any eyes. It's, it's, it's mostly mids and... I mean there's supposed to be highs in this recording. But... great but they do look good and they work well and if you just put them with a simple record player it's a, a great starter setup for cheap so yeah I uh, I don't mind uh, you know giving these to someone uh, and they look sort of serious so people fall for them but they really don't sound great at all there's so much better speakers out there um, like Philips has some simple PC speakers that actually the, the very long ones with the Rectangular, uh, I think it's also a passive resonator. Those are great. Those are actually great sounding, but they look very 90. -y. These look a bit more rugged and professional. Speaking of things that always work, these. This is one of my favorite record players and people find that very weird, but they always work. They sound remarkably good. They come with a proper card as standard, an Audio-Technica 1895E, and they're just a very pleasant little machine to work with and it, it's one of the record players that I recommend everyone who starts with a record player and they're always like oh but it's boring yes and reliable and it sounds good what more could you want let's see if I'm right about this one it's the direct drive model so if it doesn't run we're fucked but it runs cartridge is in there all skewed the lift doesn't seem to do an awful lot oh it does work wait yeah it just needs a little adjustment it's too low so it's hitting the record even though it's um, even though it's up. Uh, here we go. But you can just adjust it with a little screw here. So I'm going to put it a little bit up, and now it's fine. There we are. There's obviously no stylus. The good news is I do have stylus for these. Brand new. One brand new stylus. I'm touching the cables. That's why it's buzzing. It goes right in there, and here we go. Obviously not set up in any way, let me do that. Here we go, two grams. Up, 
they're just flawless record players. It's a pity it needed a new stylus, but other than that, these are absolutely flawless. And uh, just pleasant sounding things. Nothing exciting, but nothing bad either. And they are pretty much given away for free. So I'm just gonna put this here. So I know it's got a new stylus. Let me set up the anti-scape real quick. Let me set up the overhang as well, because of course that cartridge was in there all twisted and skewed. So we may as well fix that while we're here using my little overhang checker. It's telling me to move the cartridge forward. There you go. Most people never do this. And of course you could do it much more precise, but you know, this is already better than probably Akai even saw it as new because even the companies often don't do it. So we got that. We got the tracking force. And this game needs a little more. That looks good. Auto return. I don't think I've ever had to repair one of these. They just work. That's awesome. This young dude who regularly visits the record store, he has a few cassette decks and they're all, well, they were once good, but they're now very much broken. And he's like, oh, I need to get lucky at a thrift shop, but he's not getting very lucky because he doesn't really know what to buy or what to look out for. So I figured I'd uh, take a deck back from the thrift shop for him. This is an Akai HXA1, which is literally the simplest one Akai made from this series. But that's not a bad thing because Akai cassette decks are dead reliable. Would have been nice if they used stickers that actually could be peeled off. Do I have my royalty free music one at hand? No. Hmm. Well, should probably re record that then. I don't know what's on here. We're about to find out. I don't even know if the thing works. Let's take this off so we can see. We got no fast forward. We got some rewind. I feel like fast forward may wake up. We're playing what we have, as you can hear, no highs at all. Now that may be because the heads are dirty, maybe because the heads are not aligned properly. We're about to find out. Now I seem to remember that this Gregory Isaacs tape that someone recorded, at least, and Alpha Blondie on this side, has some highs. Okay, still virtually no highs. We do have rewind. Fast forward definitely needs a new belt. Although, there you go, there you go. Wakey wakey! I don't know what's going on here. I was failing! to do is get a new belt for fast forward. How hard can it be? New belt! Runs like a champ. I'll uh, show you in a bit. It's recording now. I just made a recording. I'm gonna digitize the recording because the thing sounds honestly impressive. That's not my recording! This is my recording. It's their cheapest deck! Sounds great! On a cheap Sony tape. HXA1. No one would look at it twice and it sounds gorgeous. After that rather remarkable Akai cassette deck, I cleaned the table. And I am going to test this Technics SL20 record player and cool detail, I don't have it right here, but this came with the box. This comes with the original um, Technics EPC 271 CES cartridge with an orange stylus. I think normally these are actually supposed to be green, I'm not sure what kind of remake this is. Looks to be in used but good shape. Arm has a bit of play, but these are not expensive record players. And um, they usually work if the speed is correct. That's the issue with these. Speed. And dirty switches. So, so far, this is not happy to run on 45, but here we go. We got something. Yeah. These are the issues with these record players. Dirty switches, dirty pitch pots, and sometimes the internal pitch pots actually need replacing. It doesn't want to run at 45 right now. Chances are it's going to do that at some point. Is 
as you can see the more I mess with that switch the better it gets this is pretty seriously iffy though so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it apart it has a very dirty um, uh, motor pulley to begin with what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean the switches and then before I do anything else try again because these tend to just have dirty switches and be okay otherwise so let's see uh, am I right yeah no this is a simple one it doesn't have the internal pots it just has the ones under here which are those two uh, which unfortunately if I want to clean them which I really should I will have to change that position so I'll try to remember it as well as possible and then when the thing is back together we'll have to readjust it but that's fine they appear to be rotated almost to the maximum I'm not sure we'll have to see um, that's not correct anyway and then there is the speed switch which is just your normal switch which also needs cleaning but this is a simple one it doesn't have the extra pot so that that's a good sign because those tend to go wrong it should be running smoothly now this belt maybe a bit on the tight side let's see if it's too tight we're obviously not going to use this one because it's really bad for your motor bearing but let's see how it feels we definitely have two speeds now that makes some sort of sense where is my speed checking disc there we go okay so it's still way off but i think they have been messing with it do we get a consistent speed at least now we do so let's adjust this to 45 way up Ooh. it's not happy yeah it's not happy oh i think we got 45 but only just to be honest well 45 is 45 and then 33 can we do 33 also only just what's going on here i can see why these were both both turned to max but it should just be doing its speed so and there's no other adjustment adjustment points that's a fact it is this or nothing there's a microcontroller there which may be iffy this as far as i know i think it has a power carousel but that shouldn't make a difference i could set it to 240 but it shouldn't matter much does that change anything at all hmm it does actually work i don't know why though now it's running more than its uh, intended speed so now we have some adjustment options If you hear some music in the background, that's uh, I'm not even sure why we're hearing that, but it's uh, a cassette, a test cassette being recorded. So now it runs at speed just fine, and I can't really tell you why, but that did solve it. I will test run this one pretty long though, because I don't quite trust it. This is too thick. This says Sony. You can't put a Sony mat on a Technics. These are all pretty serious mats. I want something a bit less heavy duty for this belt drive record player that looks about right i think that may be the mat that goes with this looks familiar but maybe that's just because i had one of these as a kid i had the sl22 it's pretty similar and it had that this mat that may not have been the original mat though let's see what we get if all goes well we get slayed at the correct speed now i don't think this is auto return no full manual let's do some adjustments because the counterweight's not set up Really? Can you maybe stay? Here we are. There's no switch here. I thought this would have a switch, but the 22 has a switch here. This is just on off. Actually really nice to work with. Uh, where was the weight? Zero grams. That's lighter than zero. That's about zero grams. Does the anti-skate work? Yeah, it does. Two grams striking force and that's too much anti-skate. So that works great. Yeah. speed seems correct yeah I was afraid that might happen now it's running too fast so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna adjust it again and then leave it running for hours and hours and hours adjust it again probably and then put it aside for a week and see if it's still correct after if it is all of the capacitors are okay again and it's uh, revived itself if it isn't uh, it need to, needs new capacitors that's a the thing these have but now it makes sense they, they twisted those pots to the max to get the 
the desired speed, but they probably didn't let it run for long enough. Other than that, great shape. Really like it, and I love that it comes with the box. So I'm gonna put this somewhere, plug it in, and see what happens. So I did actually do as I said. I let it run for a bit and let it stand for maybe a month or so. I tried it again, and it was spot on. So it's now moved on to its new owner through the record store. And uh, another Technics lives to play another day. That's the end of this video. See you next week on Friday.